Hello students. So this is lecture number 18 of our course MTH 166. It is actually the beginning of our new unit called partial differential equations or in short form we call it as PDE. Now as I told you this is the unit number 4. Its setting is partial differential equation. As far as the textbook is concerned it is still the same book. Advanced Engineering Mathematics by R.K. Jain and S.R.K. Engar and this actually includes the chapter number 9. Topic of this unit is the partial differential equations that we call as PDE. Now there are three learning outcomes. The first of all, how to formulate a partial differential equation by elimination of arbitrary constants. And the second method to formulate partial differential equation is by elimination of arbitrary functions. And the third thing that we will learn from this lecture is the classification of partial differential equations. I mean, when we can call a PDE as hyperbolic, parabolic, or elliptic. So let's start with these three outcomes one by one. First of all, earlier we used to do like if u is a function of variable x, then we say u is the dependent variable and independent variable is x then normally we differentiate u with respect to 2x and we denote it as du by dx. This is what we have done in the earlier classes. Now, what if your u is the function of two independent variables x and y? That means now you can differentiate u with respect to x or you can differentiate u with respect to y as well. So whenever you differentiate u with respect to x, you call it as curly u by curl x, not du by dx. Similarly, when you differentiate u with respect to y, we call it as curly u by curly y, not du by dy. So this is basic difference in the notations, right? Now, there are certain standard notations. Whenever you differentiate a function with respect, partially with respect to x, we call it as u subscript x or we can also call it as small p. Similarly, when u is differentiated partially with respect to y, we call it as u subscript y or you can call it as q. So these two are called the first order partial derivatives, right? Similarly, when you differentiate twice u with respect to x, we call it as uxx or r. Similarly, when you differentiate u twice with respect to y, we call it as uyy or we call it as t. Similarly, you can also take the mixed derivative. Means you first differentiate with respect to y, uh, y then you would differentiate with respect to r x or sometimes you first differentiate with respect to x then you differentiate with respect to y so this is called as a mixed derivative and we denote it by small s so these are called the second order partial derivatives right now the basic thing the chapter about which the chapter is there partial differential equation so an equation which involves the variables x y the function u and the first order derivatives only means p and q is called first order partial differential equation. Similarly, if the equation involves second order derivative like R, S and T as well, then it is called second order partial derivative, second order partial differential equation. First of all, let's see how the for, for partial differential equation can be formed. So there are two ways. First of all, the first method is by elimination of arbitrary constants. Like he says, this is a relationship that u as a function of x and y that u is equal to ax plus by. He says formulate the partial differential equation where a and b are the constants. So my job is at the end there should not be any constant a and b. Now if you look at this one u is the function of x and y. So you can either differentiate it partially with respect to x or you can differentiate it partially with respect to y. So when I differentiate equation 1 partially with respect to y I call it as curl u by curl x it is a into 1 because the derivative of x is 1 but that of y is 0 here because 0 is you know, y is considered as constant. So this curl u by curl y can also be written as small p so that means p is equal to a. Similarly if you differentiate equation 1 partially with respect to y I write it as curl u by curl y here the derivative of x is considered as 0 and that of y is considered as 1. So this curl u by curl y is written as q and now q is equal to b. So wherever it is a, I can replace it by p and wherever it is q, I can replace it by, wherever it is b, I can replace it by q. So making these substitutions back in equation number 
वन सो पुटिंग द वैल्यूज ऑफ ए एन बी इन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन आई गॉट यू इज इक्वल टू पी एक्स प्लस क्यू वाई नाउ इफ यू लुक एट दिस रिलेशन इट डज नॉट कंटेन द आर्बिटेरी कॉन्स्टेंट ए एंड बी और आई कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज यू इज इक्वल टू कल यू बाय कर्ल एक्स इन टू एक्स प्लस कल यू बाय कर्ल वाई इन टू वाई विच इज द रिक्वायर्ड पार्शल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन सो जॉब इज टू रिमूव दो कॉन्स्टेंट ए एंड बी If you look at the next question again, u is equal to a x plus b y plus a raised to power four plus b raised to power four. If you differentiate again with respect to x, you still get a. That means p is equal to a. Similarly, if you differentiate equation one partially with respect to y, you get b as the answer, right? Or q is equal to b u. And once you evaluate values of the constant, put them back in equation number one, right? So the equation one becomes what p x plus q y plus p raised to power four plus q raised to power four, which is your required partial differential equation, right? Similarly, is the third question. I think you can also do it when you differentiate equation this one. Here, alpha and beta are the arbitrary constants. So when you differentiate one partially with respect to x, this power two comes down. So it is two into x minus a. This curl u by curl v. Curl x is written as p. So finally, when you take two to this side, so that means p by two is equal to x minus alpha. Similarly, when you differentiate it partially with respect to y, q by two is equal to y minus beta. So in place of x minus alpha, I'll put p by two, and in place of y minus beta, I'll put q by two here. So this is what I got as my answer. I can write it like this, or I can write it like this. So this was the first method where we Eliminate the arbitrary constants. The second is, if the function involves general function f, then my job is to remove this function. For example, if you look at this one, u is equal to f of x square plus y square. When you differentiate partially with respect to x, it is f dash, and whatever is there within the bracket, we need to differentiate it as well, right? So, what is the derivative of x square? It is a 2x. So, I can say p is equal to f dash into 2x. So bring this 2x to this side. That means the value of f dash is actually equal to p by 2x. So this was what we got when we differentiated partially with respect to 2x. Similarly, if I differentiate partially with respect to y, again the derivative of f is f dash, and whatever is there in the bracket, I need to differentiate. Actually, it should have been y over here, right? That means q is equal to f dash x square plus y square 2y. So q by 2y. Is actually equal to f dash x square plus y square. And now, if you look at the equation number two and three, because their right hand side is same, so their left hand side should also be same. So we compare these. That means this equals to this one. That's what I have written. P by two x is equal to q by two y. This two and two cancel out. When we cross multiply, p y is equal to q x. Or the second form is cal u by cal x into y is equal to cal u by cal y into x, which is the required partial differential equation. This is how we form the equation when the function is in terms of the general function f, right? But it may happen, yes. Like it includes both. It includes f. It includes a and b. So whenever your relationship involves the general function and the constants, so your job is to remove the function. There can be the constant in the answer. Just like here, it is given u is equal to f of a x plus b y. Now. So what is curl u by curl x? Derivative of f is f dash, and that of the function within the bracket that is a. So from here, what I got? P by a equal to f dash. Similarly, when you differentiate it with respect to y, derivative of f is f dash, and that of the relationship within the bracket, the derivative is b. So from here, I got q by b is equal to f dash a x plus b y. And once you get the values of the derivative again, compare equation number two and three because their left hand sides are same, so their right hand side should also be same. That means p by equals to q by v, and when we cross multiply, I get p b equals to q a, which is my required answer. So these are the two ways of formulating the partial differential equation. Now let's move to the classification of equations. Then let us consider a general second order partial differential equation like a. Curl square u by curl x square, b curl square u by curl x curl y, c curl square u by curl y square, d curl u by curl x, e curl u by curl y plus f times the function equals to zero, where u is what basically the function of x and y. 
or in the short form i can write it as e u a u x x b u x y c u y y d u x e u y f u and still there is another way of writing it is like a r because r stands for second order partial derivative with respect to x b s s stands for second order mixed derivative c t t stands for second order partial derivative with respect to y plus other first order partial differential equation hai na so if you are given a relationship this one or my job is to compare a given relation with this second order partial differential equation once we compare it we need to get the coefficients a b and c now three kinds of nature of second order partial differential equation is possible it can be hyperbolic if and only if b square minus 4 ac greater than 0 b is what basically the coefficient of the mixed derivative a and c are the coefficients of the second order derivative with respect to x and y similarly the nature is parabolic if b square minus 4 ac equals to 0 and finally the nature of the equation is elliptic if b square minus 4 ac is less than 0 and note here that the coefficients of the second order partial derivatives only decide the nature i mean only this portion actually decides about the nature of the partial differential equation only this first three terms which in all the second order partial derivative because first order partial derivative have no contribution towards the nature okay let's go to the numericals it will be more clear he says classify the following partial differential equation as hyperbolic parabolic elliptical what i am given curl square u by curl x by curl y is equal to 3 times curl u by curl y so i can also write this as u x y this mixed derivative and when you take this derivative to the other side this becomes become minus 3 times u y equals to 0 once the relation is given just compare it with the standard equation right and look out for capital a b and c means look out for the uh, coefficient of the second order derivative here there is no u x x that means the a is zero because the first equation does not involve the second order partial derivative with respect to x it involves the mixed derivative yes that means b equals to 1 and again there is no u y y so c is equal to 0 once i get the values of a b and c my job is to calculate b square minus 4 ac here the value of b is 1 minus 4 because a is c c is 0 so it is 1 and 1 is always greater than 0 that means whenever your b square minus 4 ac greater than 0 we say the equation is a hyperbolic in nature right now let's take another example he says curl square u by curl x square two times curl square u by curl x y plus curl square u by curl y square if i write in the short form it is u x x plus two times u x y plus u y y once i got the equation i need to compare it with the second equation now here you need to compare the coefficient here u x s the coefficient is 1 that means a is 1 the coefficient of u x y that is b so that is b is equal to 2 and again coefficient of u y y is c so c equals to 1 once i got a b c i just need to plug in the values in the relation b square minus 4 ac b square means 2 square minus 4 into a means 1 into c means 1 so 4 minus 4 cancel out 0 If b square minus 4 ac is zero, that means this equation is parabolic in nature. Let's go to another example. He says curl square u by curl x square three times curl square u by curl y square is equal to curl u by curl x. Again, bring this partial derivative to the other side. Means u x x three u y y minus u x is equal to zero. Compare it with the standard equation a u x x b u y and so on. What we get? A is equal to one here. B is zero and c is. A. 3 because b is 0 because there is no mixed derivative right now again b square minus 4ac means 0 square minus 4 into 1 into 3 minus 12 which is always less than 0 since b square minus 4ac is less than 0 that means this equation is elliptic in nature and finally your coefficients may be in the general form of x and y like what we are given y into curl square u by curl x square 2x curl square u by curl x curl y plus y into curl square u by curl x square and once you compare it with the standard equation what we get a is y b equals to 2x and c is y now put it in the uh, formula b square minus 4ac so it is 2x square minus 4 into y into y if i take 4 common it is x square minus y square now i know 4 is always greater than 0 so everything now depends upon x square 
minus y square. That means the equation will be hyperbolic if x square minus y square is greater than 0. It will be parabolic if x square minus y square equal to 0. And it will be elliptic if x square minus y square is less than 0. So these three possibilities are there depending upon the values of x square minus y square. So this is it for today's lecture. For next lecture, we'll meet again. Till then, it's goodbye and thank you.